YouTube, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. This is the second video challenge for the unfortunate read along that I am hosting along with Not So Average Joe or the Book Nerd Joe depending if you're on Twitter or YouTube. Either way, it's Joe. This challenge is actually my favorite challenge in the entire thing because this is a video I've actually been wanting to do for a long time and so this is the perfect time to do it because everyone knows how important words are in the Unfortunate Events series. He's always defining words and using new words and playing with words. The challenge for this video is to talk about three to five favorite words, why you like them maybe, or you know, use them in a sentence, or explain them, whatever, all that good stuff. So I picked out five words that I really, really like because I just love weird words and different words and things like that, and then I'm going to kind of define them and stuff for you. Let's get started. Where is my book that's got my words in it? There it is. It's over here. I found it on top of this pasta. Word one is akimbo and this is actually an adverb and it means to have like your hands on your hips. If you have like your hands on your hips like this then your arms are akimbo because they are on your hips and your elbows are pointed like outward or bent so they're out like this. This can also mean that like you know for other body parts that like your legs or something it can mean that they're kind of splayed out or bent to weird angles and things like that. Um, I actually first heard about this word in one of my favorite books of the year and also ever and that book is Nod by Adrian Barnes. The entire book is from a first person perspective and the main character is actually an etymologist so he studies words. So I really enjoyed his use of words and things like that because he is an etymologist so he used more unique words and he had kind of an appreciation for them kind of like I do so I liked that and he's actually part of the inspiration for this video. The second word is interabang and this is a noun. It is a punctuation mark. Um, I will put a picture of it in this area. So if you look at the word interrobang, it has two parts. Um, the first part is intero for, you know, interrogative, and then you have bang, which is the exclamation point. You put them together and you have interrobang. A lot of times you won't see people using this mark. You'll just see people putting a question mark and an exclamation point beside each other, like their best buddies and whatnot. Um, but this will be used in the case of you asking an exclamatory question. So like if I came home and I was like, Husband, where did all the chocolate go? And it was really loud and questioning, then that would be a good time for an interrobang. Or if you asked, why is there a penguin on the couch? That would be a great time for an interrobang, unless you're used to having penguins on the couch, in which case it might not be so alarming. Word number three is phantasmagoria. I actually like the word phantasmagorical more, but we're going to go with the noun version, which is phantasmagoria. And this is an exhibition of optical effects and illusions. So phantasmagoria is essentially a big mishmash of images that are either real or not real. Usually they're fantastical and bizarre, things that you would experience a lot in dreams. Or if you um, have seen a movie, something that's supposed to kind of resemble kind of an acid trip, um, where it's got like a bunch of different colorful fantastical things that are just sort of all over the place and kind of uncomfortable, that would be a phantasmagoria. Or if you were describing a dream that was super tangential and went from one place to another and whatnot, then that would be very phantasmagorical. The fourth word is a little controversial. Not like as it's going to offend someone, but it is actually not present in Webster's Dictionary or the Oxford Dictionary. If you actually search this word, all sources sort of point to this one article written by Mark Forsyth, who's an etymologist, and he specializes in looking in really obscure dialects of language. And so this word is finifugal or finifugal or however you want to pronounce it because there's an, I cannot find any resource where someone's pronouncing this word. I've only seen it in an article where I've read it and I've seen it used by people who have seen that article. So it's I've never actually heard it pronounced. I've only read it pronounced. But you know, most of you are readers and we have a lot of words like that. So finifugal, which is gonna be the pronunciation I'm going with for the remainder of this video, is a hatred or an avoidance of endings. And this can be the ending of a vacation, the ending of a relationship, um, something that's even more relatable, the ending of a book or a series, which is something I have an issue with because I have about seven different things on my shelves that are series that I haven't finished or trilogies I haven't finished. And it's like I've read all but the last book because I am finifugal. I really like this word though because it's really obscure and it's not very popular. And I really like the meaning because it's a feeling that a lot of people have felt but haven't quite had the word for outside of just saying that you're sort of avoidant of endings. So that's why I like it. Even if I have a hard time pronouncing it 
or don't know how to pronounce it. The fifth word is only on here because of the pronunciation because it has exquisite mouthfeel. It's a little Bob's Burgers reference for you. But that word is bulb. <laughs> it's very short, four letter word, bulb. And it's just an object with a rounded or teardrop shape. Everyone knows what a light bulb is or like tulip bulbs, things you plant. But I don't really care about the meaning. I just like to say it. Bulb. Bulb. And those are all five of my weird vocab words that I really enjoy. Leave a comment below with some of your favorite weird vocabulary words or not so weird vocabulary words. Because I like to learn new words and I like to hear what other people like. So. And before we end this video, it is time for a booktuber spotlight. Today's booktuber spotlight is going to Leah from Where in the World is Leah Jane. She helped us out on our Eliza and Her Monsters live show for the Green Ribbon Book Club. And she has awesome videos. I really love her videos. She speaks so well and has such great points to make. And even outside of her videos, she's a super kind person. And she is great at building other people up and all that good stuff. Everything you want in a good friend. So, you should go ahead and check out her channel. And that is all for this video. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under